What is up guys, I hope everyone is doing well. So in today's video, we are putting together a $1,500 AMD gaming PC. So I will take you through all the steps, including all the wiring, all that annoying stuff so that you guys can just follow along and build yourself an awesome gaming PC. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at all the parts we will need. First up, we will be using the Ryzen 5 3600 with six cores, 12 threads, and a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz for the price, this is a great CPU with plenty of overclocking potential. You can of course spend a little bit extra and get that 3600X if you wish, but the 3600 is definitely awesome for the money. So cooling that 3600 will be the NZXT Kraken X63. This will get the job done and ensure if we want to go ahead and overclock that we can without anything getting too hot. The motherboard that we are pairing this up with is the popular MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. This motherboard is packed with all the features we need and for £120 here in the UK, you really can't go wrong. So next up we have the MSI RTX 2070 Super Gaming X. There are obviously cheaper alternatives when it comes to this card but I feel this not only looks great but performs great as well but feel free to go ahead and swap this out. For the RAM, we are using 16GB of HyperX Fury, that again is priced super well for RGB RAM. And now onto the star of the show, the case I opted for is the Bitphoenix Dawn TG. When it's not plugged in, it definitely looks understated, but when you smash that power button, you get some of the coolest RGB that I have seen on a case yet, and it is all controlled via the case, so adding extra fans, RGB strips, etc, and having them all synced together is super super easy so that's definitely nice. And speaking of adding fans, I am obviously going to go ahead and add some extra Bitphoenix RGB fans into this build just to go ahead and spice it up but again you can decide whether you need this or not. So last up for the storage, I have went for a 500GB WD Blue M.2, perfect for the OS and a few games and of course I will pair that with a 1TB Seagate Barracuda just for that extra storage. The power supply is the Bitphoenix Whisper 750 watt. So that's all our parts guys. Of course you can go ahead and swap these out, but in this build guide I will be showing you how to use all of them parts and put together an awesome PC. So with that said, let's build this. Okay, so as always we will start with preparing the motherboard. So go ahead and lay it on top of the motherboard box. Next, grab the CPU, making sure to hold it from the sides and not to damage any of those pins. Take note of the triangle on the CPU itself, as we will match this with the marking on the motherboard socket. When you are ready, open the latch, set the CPU in the socket gently, no force is needed at all, and when it's seated, go ahead and close the latch back over. Now go ahead and grab your RAM, taking note of the cutout, as we will match this to the notch on the RAM slots of the motherboard, and when you are ready, Open up the slots by pressing down on the tabs and from there press the RAM into place. Some force is required, just take your time and it will click into place securing the tabs. Ok so let's go ahead and install our M.2 drive. The first job we have to do is move the post on the motherboard over to the right just one space and this will ensure we have the correct fitment. In case you are wondering, it just screws out easily with your thumb. Now just go ahead and look at the cutouts on the M2 and again we are going to match these with the notches on the motherboard. To install it, all we have to do is just push it into place, then take the screw that is included in the motherboard box and just screw it down into place. So the next job we have to do is go ahead and remove all the panels from the case itself and obviously the cable management panel as well in the rear. This has four screws, two either side, and if we take this out, that will allow us to route all our cables nice and easy. Inside the case, you will also find a bag with all the screws, etc. you will need for going forward, so just put that to the side. As we will be mounting our NZXT cooler up front, we have to remove the two encoded fans. These are held in with four screws, so just go ahead and take them out. Now to install the IO shield, this should be in your motherboard box. It just pops into the rear of the case, you do need some force and it can be fiddly, but just persevere and you will get there. Before we put the motherboard in, we have to install three standoffs that look like this. They're included in the bag you removed from the case, so just screw these into the three holes and make sure they're in straight and nice and snug. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and put the motherboard in the case. Just line this up with the standoffs and the IO shield at the rear and it will sit in nice and easy. From there, Take the motherboard screws included with the case, they look like this, 
and go ahead and screw the motherboard down. Just start in one corner and move diagonal till the next until you have them all in. So now it's time to go ahead and install our extra RGB fans. As I mentioned, this is optional but it definitely will spice this build up so I definitely recommend it. So first of all, remove the magnetic mesh from the top of the case. Grab the screws that come with the fans and from there, hold them in place, of course ensuring you have them fitted as an exhaust with wires at the rear for easy cable management and just go ahead and screw them into place. Now that we have done that, we can go ahead and fit our cooler. So the X63 arrives with the Intel bracket pre-applied, so we of course have to swap this out for the AMD bracket. It's super simple, it's just a twist off, twist on arrangement, so it's straightforward enough. From there, grab these standoffs labelled AM4 from the box, as we will be using these to mount it, and we will also need four of these thumb screws. So before we can go ahead and install this, we have to remove the bracket that is included on the motherboard already. So just take out these four screws and remove the two black pieces, leaving the backplate in situ as we will still use this. So now that these are removed, take your AM4 standoffs and screw them into the backplate. The circle end goes towards the motherboard, leaving the posts facing up as you can see here. So now we can go ahead and fit the radiator. So grab these long bolts with the washers from the box. Then I suggest sitting your fans on top of each other, making sure you have pulled the cables through to the rear of the case, and then take your radiator and just set it up against your fans. Now from the front of the case, you can line the fans up to the correct holes on the radiator. Just take your time, making sure that they are definitely lined up with the holes and you are not screwing into the fins, this is super important. Then just take your bolts and washers and secure everything down into place. Now if we look at the pump head, you will see there are two connections. So grab the wires from the box and plug these in before going any further as it will make things a lot easier. Just as a side note, as you can see, the cooler does come with pre-applied thermal paste, so no need to use your own. Now go ahead and place the pump head over the CPU standoffs and use the thumb screws to secure it down into place. I suggest you do this in a diagonal pattern again. And when you have them all on, give them an extra little tighten with a screwdriver. Just make sure you do not over tighten. So now we can go ahead and plug some wires from the cooler into the motherboard. Grab the CPU fan that looks like this and attach it to the CPU header on the motherboard located here. Now go ahead and grab this USB cable. This plugs into a USB header on the bottom of the motherboard, again, clearly labeled. And now you will be left with two cables. This cable here, we won't use it, so just go ahead and tuck it away. And the SATA cable, we will connect to the power supply when we go ahead and install it shortly. As I'm using extra fans, I went ahead and purchased some fan splitter cables from Amazon, and I will leave that link below. Basically, it turns one fan header into two, three, four, etc., and just makes things a lot easier. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and attach one of these splitter cables to a fan header on the motherboard, then simply feed it to the back of the case. From there, I can go ahead and plug the two fans from the AIO in, and they will both be controlled from the one fan header. We can then do the same again for the remaining three fans in the system. Just use a one to three splitter. As these fans are RGB, we will go ahead and make use of the onboard controller. So remove this white cap and plug one of your RGB fans in here, then the rest of them you can just daisy chain up, just in a loop like so. So now that we have done that, we can start connecting some of the case cables up. So I suggest starting with the front I.O. cables that you see here. First of all, grab your motherboard manual as it clearly shows you what order to install these and makes things a lot easier. And when you have done that, just plug them all into the header located here. The next cable is labelled HD Audio and this installs on the bottom left of the motherboard in this location. Just push it into place. Next up, we have the USB 3 cable and the port on the motherboard for this is super obvious, just make sure you line that notch up. The case does come with a USB-C cable, but unfortunately our motherboard doesn't support this, but fear not as there are plenty of USB-C ports on the back of the I.O. so it's not really a massive deal, so just go ahead and tuck this out of the way. So now before we install the power supply, let's go ahead and fit the Seagate drive. So lay the case down and loosen these four screws and the caddy should just slide out of place. You can then attach the drive into the caddy and the screws are included with the case, there is four in total and it should look something like this. From there, go ahead and slide it back into the case, tighten the screws up and you are good to go. Before we can put the power supply in the case, we have to attach our cables. 
They are all clearly labelled and just push into place, so go ahead and do that now. When you are ready, make sure the fan is facing the bottom of the case and slide it into place and use the screws that arrived with the power supply to secure it down. So now we can go ahead and start attaching the rest of our cables. Grab the cable that is labelled CPU and we plug this into the port labelled CPU on the motherboard. Just make sure you route it nice and neat for easy cable management when we finish. The next cable we attach is the motherboard cable. So go ahead and grab it and simply push it into place. Just make sure this one is seated correctly. We can now give our hard drive some power and connect it to our motherboard. So go ahead and connect a SATA cable from the power supply up to the drive like so. Then grab a SATA cable from the motherboard box. One end goes into the drive and the other end goes into a SATA port located here on your motherboard. While we are here, we can connect the SATA cables from the cooler etc up. Just plug them into the power supply like so. They only go one way. The last job we have is to fit the graphics card. So remove these two brackets from the case. Open up your PCIe slot by pushing this tab down and then just slide the graphics card into place. Just give it a little push and it will click in. From there, use the two screws from the brackets to secure the card. Just make sure they are nice and tight as you do not want any sagging on the card at all. To power the card, we take the cables labelled PCIe from the power supply and just simply plug them in here. You need one 8 pin and one 6 pin. So now after some cable management, you can just go ahead, reattach all the panels from your case and hit that power button. Hopefully you have a lovely RGB show and the PC should boot into the BIOS and from there you can go ahead and install Windows and all your drivers etc. I will leave a video in the description below that shows you how to do that. Super simple so don't panic. Okay so now most importantly how does this PC perform? So you will be happy to know that this system will handle all of your favourite titles at 1440p max settings with ease. Okay, so that pretty much rounds this build guide up guys. If you've went ahead and followed this or plan to follow it, let me know down below in the description. Obviously, if you have any questions, let me know down below or even join our Discord as there are plenty of people in there that are willing to help you on the build process, etc. As always guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe, be kind to each other, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.